Uh, all right, so we should be live. I'm speaking with Piero, um, and we're going to discuss uh, unit analysis kind of stuff, just, um, you know, mostly related to F equals MA, um, the derivatives of these equations and how they're exactly put together and <clears throat> what relevance they might have. I'll just say as a context that... Um, I've requested experimental evidence of the kinetic energy formula being correct about anything ever. Just a single experiment demonstrating the collection of this extra energy. And no one's ever provided the experiment. And I have provided evidence of experiments that do sort of demonstrate that the 10-ton train going 5 miles an hour has exactly the same amount of energy as the 5-ton train going 10 miles an hour. So, um... I don't think these derivatives are accurate, <laughs> and uh, but we'll discuss it and see where it goes. So uh, say hello, Piero. Hello, Piero. Okay, and such. <laughs> yeah, there, there, that's enough of Piero, right? Uh, now I just go on my um, thing. Um, so you can start. Um, you're you're a big F equals M A fan. I I never right. I never really appreciate it just because the A doesn't seem like a real number. You know what I mean? What's the A going to be? Is it going to be what point five? Well, that's kind of what I wanted to start out talking about and see if we disagree along that route. Um, because with unit analysis is a pretty I think interesting thing that answers some of these questions that you have. Even if you end up disagreeing still, right, even if you don't like the way it maps to reality, it answers why classical physics has come to this place where, where it looks at it that way. But let's just start, um, here, I'll, I wrote that while you were talking. Um, but um, so first of all, do we agree that basically physics and math overlap just in three things, time, right? And uh, I could say space, let's say space, because it's three-dimensional, but this is really, you know, distance. These are the things they can measure in science. Everything else that might be measurable, you know, th they don't <laughs> care about it. So it's space, time, and what? Mass. Yeah. That's it. <clears throat> right. And, and I would say that time is um, the functional part. You know, where space is the dimensional part and, you know, mass is the component that's getting acted on. So that's sort of how I would look right, at it. Right, except for I, what I'm going to argue that all of those can play those different roles, even though you're right, that time usually is the parameter, like what I want to go through. So anyway, so what we have is seconds, um, you know, meters or miles, you know, whatever. Right. And uh, what did I miss? Oh, and, and grams. But, of course, even with grams, we usually use kilograms. And then with, of course, in our system, we actually, you know, uh, would be, uh, have elves or whatever, right? So, so. <laughs> well, I'm just saying it is so, f f so familiar for us. I mean, I could say kilograms per square inch of pressure, but I don't think any Americans ever said that. <laughs> yeah, kick pounds. Exactly. I still think halfway, you know, especially with some of this in pounds, especially if you want to imagine how heavy something is. But, you know, you can map it fairly easily. So well, we'll just go back and forth. In a way, it's easier to use well, the yeah, we, we, metric ones. Right, we agree that... And the, for the, meter, and you don't have to go MI for mile, you know, or FT for foot, you know, so I'm going to use the metric unless you, you mind. But so, um, so for example, uh, oops. Okay, so velocity equals distance over time. Fair enough, right? Well, so it's, 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 one, it's one measure, but it doesn't tell you anything because obviously over a period of time, you could, your velocity could be changing if you're accelerating. Acceleration always, exactly. gives, it always gives you a velocity. So when you're measuring velocity, you may not be measuring yeah. the absolute. So you always have to have... It might the, be changing. You have right? to have if the conditional. Changing, right. That, that's why it needs a conditional, like a or dot. Or at an instant. When it is changing, we do the velocity, the instantaneous velocity, even though it just zipped by that, right? And you never almost could have caught it at that velocity, but it did travel through that velocity. So the thing is, so first of all, I wanted to talk about the difference 
And I've been thinking about this with an open mind of like, what is the difference between when you divide these values versus multiply them? So when you are dividing distance by time, you're saying every period of time, so it's per, every period of time, you're covering a distance. So this velocity, when you're dividing, is, is saying, here's the amount of distance per time. It could be more distance, depending on how much time you spend, right? So how much time you spend is underneath, because it's distance per the time you spend. The distance you got out of the time you spend. Well, I, I would I would say yeah I would I'd say that's agreeable, but I just add that the d dividing is always sort of establishing a proportionality. Right, always it is. I would say right. That's what I'm trying to say. It's a proportionality and a ratio. The whole idea of rationality actually is based on this ratio that I have this much distance for every this amount time or whatever for every whatever you divide by right right well so all i'm saying is it's like you just said ratio you're really just looking for like you could be blonde children for every generation <clears throat> whatever. well yeah but the point is is the units wouldn't matter as long as the units are in likewise proportions so that's what I would argue is that all you're really looking for is the elemental relationship that is something like five to one or three to two or whatever it is, but that's sure. all you're looking for. In the for. case of velocity, that's that's exactly what you're doing, the distance to time velocity. And that's why, you know, 100 miles per hour for every or 100 miles for every hour is the same as 50 miles for every half hour. Right. So the, what I'd like to that's establish, though, is that if I was doing this formulization, I would establish the V as being like a dot product. I'd give it a mark that says this is a constant velocity. And that way, well, that way you can do this equivalency. See, the problem is, is you're going to use this DT idea and transfer it to some other circumstance where yeah, it's we're not going a to talk constant about acceleration. But before that, let's talk about what does multiplication mean. What about the fact that d equals v times t? Well, yeah, that I always look at. You know, I I'm looking at it as that's where you're just adding something to something. So, you know, you're adding a set to a set. So, so there, I would think of it as like painting, it's like painting something, right? And I would just go that you're multiplying by just adding a layer of paint to something else's existence and therefore amplifying its size. So if you're doing mass times velocity, the velocity is just increasing the mass in a way. The velocity is proportionally increasing the mass. Like adding a thickness it's to it. It's increasing it, right. Right. In that, a that, multiplicative way because right. then it, it's a factor, it's the other direction of a proportion. Right. Well, we know the proportion is 50-50 in the sense that for every bit of velocity you add, it's like adding a certain amount of mass. So it's always the same, you know, there's always a connection between the two things. So I make the mass less, I make the velocity higher, I make the velocity higher, I make the mass less kind of thing. Well, so what's the language? The thing is, this guy is like, if, if you're going per, this one is over or like for. Like, if I go a velocity for a period of time then I will get the distance. I right? know, so but then you've taken mass completely out of it. And mass is... No, <laughs> mass isn't in yet. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. velocity. Right? There's all, no mass yet. And so we haven't gotten the whole physics because there's no kilograms yet, but there's two of the three elements we have, right? So if distance is velocity times time, what you're saying is a velocity instead of per time period, it's not that I... I get a velocity over a time period, which is more like acceleration, right? It's velocity for a given time, right? So I have a certain velocity, and then I spend that velocity, boom, not one second, but two seconds, but multiple time units, and then I get the distance from... That's why we multiply. Aren't you? So this aren't is you? Like a crucial part. Aren't why you? Aren't you? I know, but but aren't you multiplying uh, a constant times a constant? Then aren't you? Velocity already has time in it. You can't write a velocity without it already being in meters per second or well, in but some. But that's the thing. So look, <clears throat> d equals d over t. So when I say d equals v over t times t, that, or I'm sorry, d. Right, I, that was messed up. Let's just fix that. Well, that doesn't even have a V in it, then. No. 
It's substitution. So V I, equals D over T. So here's the V. And so that's why those cross out. You end up I, with right. D. That's but exactly that silly, what. That's but, but really, it's, it's D of a measurement over T of a measurement. That's a velocity times T of a duration. Right. And what happens is the units are what crosses out. Now, the velocity is already already in a um, apportionment style. It's already it's, it's already yeah. telling you per second or per minute or per hour or per something. So you can't multiply it times time again because you're just you're you're there's no rationality but that, to it. But if, but if you are if you have a velocity that you're going to travel for a particular amount of time. So let's say you're traveling 60 miles an hour for 3 hours. How far do you go? 60 miles an hour, three hours. Well, yeah, right. So I understand what you're saying by applying time, but I could also just put distance right back into the same equation. So I don't understand. It no, you can do. Distance does come in because all these equations start using all these relationships, right? Because the next thing to talk about is the fact that uh, A, it compounds itself. It's, it's the process of abstraction that A is V over T. Right, the velocity changes over time, and that's why when you have force of gravity equals g, it, that's what is it, nine point eight meters per second squared. Right, but but acceleration is one half um, something or other. What the hell is it? One half um, mgh. Well, if you're talking about uh, gravity. <clears throat> well, the, the, my obviously, point is just it, we're we're looking at the unit analysis of acceleration is velocity over t, right? So that's the same as velocity times one over t, right? I, well, I grant you, but I'm just saying. So that, then, what is v? V is d over t times one over t. So that's how you get these two guys get on the bottom get multiplied. And it's t squared, and that is a unit of meters per second squared, and that's what force as unit is. Well, I know, but that force is a unit, but it shouldn't be uh, established as being forcing a f the amount of force. So again, when you convert this into saying that force equals that, that's where I'm saying, yeah, you just multiply the time times itself, and what the hell is that? <laughs> I mean, that's just cheating. Right. So that's what I think we're talking about. And I thought we would talk about this. And I thought this is interesting because the other one is like, how would you have feet squared? That's a, weird. What do you mean feet? That's like velocity or any other things. Distance squared. Right. But we understand this one. This is somewhat common sense why that's different from a foot. Right. Well, we the reason is because you have a square. This direction is a foot. And I want to know, but I want to know what the whole area is. So I take this foot that's here, and there's a how many? And there's a bunch of them, right? There's a bunch of these little feet. How many? There's a foot in another direction, and that's how you get foot squared. Well, so I know, but there there's no, that's not that's squared, not a weird, problem. That, that's not a problem, but because you can also cube it, so you know, cubic foot. Mm -hmm. So I mean, that's a unit. You're talking about squaring a speed, which is not the same thing at all because well, also, it doesn't have any dimensions. It doesn't have dimensions, so how can you possibly square something that doesn't have any dimensions? Well, let's go back to this. Velocity we calculate um, equals d over t. And that means if you want to know the distance that you travel when you travel a certain time for a certain velocity, velocity for... A time is how you calculate it. So if it's 100 miles an hour and I go for three hours, it's 300 miles. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not, dis I'm not disputing that won't get you the right answer. What I'm disputing is that you can take these equivalencies and switch them around like they're all, yeah. like they can be used in any circumstance. And what I'm clearly trying to say is, is that obviously the acceleration and velocity are not the same thing. So unless you've established that it has constant velocity, you can't use this 
and say things that are in non-constant velocity are obeying the same rule. No, they're not. we're going to go into the non-constant <clears throat> velocity. It follows after this because it's built upon this. And what happens when you have a changing velocity is that this is just instantaneous, and you have to have instantaneous ideas of velocity at a certain point in time. Well, I mean, how would you even write that, though? Let's say I do but it. But we're so, just doing the what, what if? So well, I'm just me, saying. I'm saying that. if I want to apply F equals MA, what would right. I establish acceleration to be when two kinetic balls hit each other, like in Newton's cradle? Well, well I'm going to get to here, but the, we need to get to A. Well, I'm just saying the whole event took place in less than a millisecond. So, I mean, how are you going to calculate any um, uh, uh, relationship that's relevant to acceleration because acceleration is obviously instantaneous from our perspective. Well, it's not instantaneous, and that's kind of the point. Well, it is. It is. It is instantaneous. No, the, fast, the minute the minute not. the other ball leaves, it's leaving at its maximum velocity. It doesn't take at any time to achieve maximum velocity, so it doesn't strike. Yeah, it does. No, it yeah, doesn't. Of course, it does. No, it, it doesn't. It, it, no, as soon as a cue ball. You're saying it skips from zero meters per second to. Five miles an hour or whatever. I'm it's saying zero. yes, because it happens in almost. It happens in no, a cue ball hits the eight ball, right? And I so I'm hitting the ball. The cue ball stops dead, and the eight ball leaves at exactly the velocity the cue the maximum velocity the cue ball had. So we've completely exchanged the velocity, and it took place in such a tiny piece of time. How the hell could you even apply F okay, equals well, MA? Okay, we disagree. Of course, it takes a little period of time, and all these numbers work during it. I mean, well, I, w I would say, say they can't possibly work because it's milliseconds, you know, a millionth of a second. So what's going on is that surface of that ball is so rigid that a wave goes through it and does a really small pulse. And the, the follow through of that pulse is such that it's the right speed to get that other thing going, but it all but it's transferred, yeah, in a, probably some number of nanoseconds, not maybe a millisecond like you said, but maybe even less than that. But that's because the cue ball's made out of something rigid, right? Well, like I know, if it but was if made I made out of rubber, it would take a little bit longer. And it, I know, but it's the speed of sound. Off. It's the speed of sound. So if I make them out of steel, it's the speed of sound in steel. Yeah, that's not infinite. But anyway, <laughs> let's not argue about that at the moment, though. I think that is, you're right, that's kind of where it's going. But let's let's wait for a second, because I want to see how far. You agree that this uh, formula works, and let me just say that, yeah, this is the perspective of why, of how the science feels it's following math. This is like a first step, since V is D over T, Instead of getting t, t squared, here you get T canceled out. The numbers are, these are not the same T, right? Because this is the D over the T that you measured the velocity with, right? For the first five minutes, you measured the velocity with a small five-minute T and a small D. You got the velocity of 100 miles an hour, and then you said, well, I'm going to keep doing this speed, and then I went, you know, T, you know, whole number of period, and, but what cancels out is that this is in seconds, and this is in seconds, and the seconds cancel out, and you end up with the unit meters or miles, right? That's the point. The units cancel out when you do this formula, and those numbers, of course, you have to start paying attention to, you know, what T. You know, when I measure the velocity, there's a T that gets the velocity, and then to, to use this, I, I'm using some other period that could be any period I want to know. I'm going 100 miles an hour, and I go for whatever amount of time, and I could use this to find out how far I would go if I did that. And that's why you would multiply things when you have to kind of expand it by the amount of time in this case. Or with feet, you're like, I got feet in one direction, north-south, but I'm going to go feet in another direction because I've got an acreage. And so I go one foot by one foot, I get a square foot. And what's the difference? Well, you know, one dimensional versus two dimensional or a cubic foot, you know, three dimensional, right? So that's how we get um, meters per second here. And here we're going to have meters. And if we want to know the time period, what's the time in terms of velocity? The time is um, d divided by the velocity because you can move this over here but like right i forget if you actually i'll do this for if not you then the audience but when you have a d equals vt what you can do is d um 
uh, what was I going to solve for the, the time? So I can say D divided by V equals V times T divided by V, which means that uh, T equals D over V. So T equals D over V. I understand, but those see that that's what I'm saying that these equivalencies are in no pure form, in my opinion, because velocity into the distance velocity is already something. It's a rate. How do you define? How do you divide a rate into a distance? I mean, what's the geometry for that? I mean, how how would you even understand it? The rate. In, you know, it's not like you're saying it went a certain distance and I'm doing a distance into a distance. No, you're doing a rate into a distance. Right, and why does it make sense? Because if it's like I want to go 100 miles. on Things on this side, I get to set and say, hey, I want to go 100 miles and my velocity is 100 miles per hour. What? How much time will it take? Well, if I multiply that out, since velocity is on the bottom here, it's like multiplying by the switch around where it's instead of D over T, it's D over D. And these, the, the seconds here and the seconds here end up canceling out. And I end up with, uh, or I'm sorry, not the seconds, the meters and the meters cancel out and I end up with the seconds. And so, you know, if I want to go 300 miles and it's 100 miles an hour, I'll end up with, you know, three hours. Right. Okay, I accept that. Let's but get back to the... Well, the point here is just that that's why we multiply or divide things. In the weird case of trying to figure out how much time something takes, I actually do the very weird thing of taking a distance and dividing it by a velocity. Why would I take a distance and divide it by a velocity? And it's because I want the time. But it seems weird to relate those two, but it's no difference than taking a distance and dividing it by the time. It's because sometimes one thing is measured per another. The more of the distance, then I'm going to need, you know, then the velocity, I'm going to need more if the time was to stay the same. That kind of relationship through the ratio is imposed by the fact that in science I could say, Hey, I now have the tools. To I, know, I know, I know, I know. I'm already conceding. I'm already conceding that, but you could have just left it in the regular form, which you just yeah. multiplied the ratio, the fraction times the whole number, and it would have looked better, in my opinion. So that's I would have left it alone. I would have left it in its original form, instead of deriving it down um, to velocity. Um, you know where you have. Okay, that's fair enough. I mean, I get what you're saying, but. Part of the problem here is that there's so many ways to thread this together. As you get to things like energy, there's more than one way to look at what the units really mean, right? Because when you have just distance to time or, or, or velocity times distance or whatever, or times time, all of those ones, it's a little more common sense, even though it's, it's still, it can be weird, but compared to when you get you know, multiple things squared over multiple other things cubed, you know, that it, so that's why I want to go step by step. So let's do, let's do acceleration. And you already brought that up unless you want to talk about something else for a second, mm -hmm. but that's um, <clears throat> velocity over time. Yeah. Well, I just want to talk about it in the sense of that you're, you're multiplying um, whatever this unit is times its mass to establish a force. Now, are you establishing a force in the rate of force or is it the total force? So obviously, if it's acceleration, that is in units of a specific amount of time. So you're really saying force per unit of time. You're not really saying total force. Well, we're not to force yet, though. Uh, well, I mean, we're, we're, I'm saying that F equals MA is the, 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 where all this corruption starts. So well, to me, about, to me, it's the, the definition, it's the next, it's the definition of A that I'm finding all the fault with because it's not, it's not a good, it's not, it's not saying anything except a rate and a specific well, circumstance. The T's acceleration is 9.8. Uh, meters per second squared. Let's talk about what that means. So we got a thing. It starts at a zero velocity. Uh, let's not do that. Let's right, say, right. But if we uh, go, if we go v by equals zero, v at v zero equals zero, then it falls. Right uh, after for after a one second. Right after one second, it's only gone four point nine meters. 
So after one second, it's not. It hasn't done this nine point eight meters per no, second. No, no, but it's velocity. Exactly, its velocity it's is velocity nine point eight. Is nine meters per second. Though. Nine point eight, right? But but it and has it. But if I it, measured it, if I measured its velocity your way based on distance, okay, I would conclude its velocity is four point nine meters per second, because it only traveled four point nine meters in that second. You get my point? But that's, yeah, but that's the whole thing with if you had a graph of velocity versus time, or no, we're doing velocity versus distance, actually. Yeah, well, but, well obviously I'm just velocity, saying. If we had a thing for velocity versus distance, right, the velocity is going up. Well, it's really time. Have, it's time to distance, wait, wait, though. Four point, whatever you said, eight, you know, meters of distance. Because this angle here, it wasn't the full velocity the whole time. That's why. So the thing is, as far as what acceleration means, the velocity at this point is going to be 9.8, and the velocity down here is going to be twice as much. because the Now, the distance that it's traveled is not 9.8 because it was at velocity zero to begin with. Well, that's, it traveled but, but, up. But my point is, is going to be my own, average velocity is going to be four point five. My plus only three. point is, is if I use your definition that we're supposed to be able to use this unit or statement in all places to get the right answer, I'm saying if I was to derive its velocity by using your equation, mm -hmm. it would tell me its velocity is four point nine. No, because you're talking about it changing, and that that does get dealt with the changingness of it. I'm just saying that the distance over time, That's why you get I'm just answer. saying distance over time will not give me the right answer. If I use distance over time, I'm going to get the wrong answer for what its velocity is. No, you use, no, it's velocity over time. So the, okay, so if A equals V over T, then what does that mean V equals? V equals A times T. Well, I mean, one one isn't t isn't going to do any good because it's one second, and so uh, you, you know, and then so you're sitting there saying. So that means that every second when something's falling, its velocity gets nine point eight meters per second faster. So no, no, five no, seconds, no, it doesn't. It's five times no, if I was to ask the simple question, okay, what's its velocity? And you use your equivalence in that formula, where you just before were saying distance equals time over velocity, or whatever the hell it was, or the velocity divided by time. I'm going to get the wrong answer. But look, look I, I don't understand what you're saying yet. So we have a race car. I'm saying you're going to use derivatives that say change in time over change in in um, uh, distance, and you're going to use those relationships to establish the fact that this is a reliable tool. I can use this tool for any circumstance. And what I'm pointing out is is that in this circumstance, it's, it wouldn't even work. It can't even get the first meter of distance right because it's going to predict the wrong velocity. Okay, so if something goes zero to 60 miles per hour, it was accelerating, right? <clears throat> Yeah, but you don't know. Can we calculate how fast it was, how fast it accelerated? Assuming it accelerated at a constant rate, how fast did it accelerate to get to sixty miles per hour in five seconds? But we know With, that this isn't a very good example, so you're better off with like a spaceship or something, because we know that for cars, the first ten miles an hour is where you lose the most rubber. You, you know what I mean? So your 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 friction coefficient is so much different the first one second versus the last second. So, I mean, there's, a you know, it's a huge, it's really hard to calculate ex the acceleration of a car. I'm just saying it's hard to do. Okay, so let's say a rocket. I said, imagine there was a constant acceleration, right? Because you're talking about, even if it's a car, you're talking about what was its, ex its, its average acceleration that it accomplished over that time period, right? And there's obviously a curve but you could try to make it linear. And when you talk about wanting to make it linear, that's the thing about springs. They're not perfectly linear either. However, if you have a spring, and this is its natural length, right? 
and you compress it down to here, what's the force that it, and you lock it, you know, with the lock here for the time being, w when you release that, what's the force? Well, the force is linear on the distance. It, I believe it equals KD. Or right. The force <clears throat> equals KD. So. Yeah, that's just a spring constant. And you're just going with the fact that as you go deeper and deeper into the spring, each inch of compression delivers more force. Right. Right. So, and so it's not constant. I know, However, but it's always strict. It's like this. It's like this, right? You have force and the, the, the X they actually Right. It's perfect. It. It's perfectly symmetrical. Yeah. And it's like this. Yeah. Boing. It what? goes from whatever it is at this, at, at the compression. But you can also s draw it the other way, right? You can draw it like this, but that's weird because it then it ends up compressed, right? So, but you can draw yeah, it either well way. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying we know that the compression it's just like with magnets, okay? The same, it's sort of the same truth. You go deeper into the magnets, like gravity, you know, sure. it gets much stronger. Yeah, and that's our square. So, yeah. so, um, you know, I, I'm not that. That's really not in dispute. I mean, whether that has something to do with why well, people. Well, it comes up to something I wanted to talk about, but not necessarily yet. Yeah, well, my only argument about, like I said, the acceleration of, of a car is dependent on the wheel spinning. You know what I mean? And so the rotation rate of the wheels is deciding how fast the car is accelerating, where obviously that can't be a constant force. Well, that's what I'm saying about the spring. The spring is, um, you know, you don't assume that the object starts like moving. It, it's more continuous, even though the force starts out at a high number. The object doesn't go from zero to whatever velocity. There's some distance, right? Because the physics of math, mathematics does not apply to physics when you go to zero instantaneous, except by <laughs> these weird calculus tricks, which I don't, I'm trying to avoid talking to you about, at least to begin with, because they, you know, they're mathematical abstractions that there isn't in physical reality, I believe, this is a personal thing, I don't think science necessarily agrees with me, but it would if it ever thought about it kind of a thing, is that there is no instantaneous, like we talk about the instantaneous velocity, but the whole point of a velocity is there has to be some tiny, tiny period of time, right? Things aren't frozen. If they really were frozen, then everything's at rest. Well, let's say there was 500 watts going through an electric wire. I would argue that the 5,000 watts never has to accelerate and decelerate. So when you move those wattage through different mediums, you know, different resistors or capacitors or this or that, that wattage never has to re-accelerate anything because it's moving at a, the electrons are moving at a certain speed and they just keep moving at that speed through the different, different mediums. So I would kind of compare the true 100% kinetic interaction where you transfer the energy as efficiently as possible and as quickly as possible that those transfers really do involve no acceleration because they're transferring the velocity from one electron right to another electron you know so if an electron's going half the speed of light and it hits another electron's field um, the other electron leaves at half the speed of light it doesn't have to you know first go 10 miles an hour then go 20 miles yeah. an hour then go 30 it just moves well that's esoteric though well, like, I, I don't necessarily agree with that, but it's also beyond like I'm, I think we're doing good talking about the basic idea of how physics relates to math or not at a level we both kind of agree with. And it's interesting that you're already disagreeing with some of the aspects of acceleration, but I think that's fine from my point of view, because we're finding out where the maybe the most fundamental disagreements are. Because some of the disagreements are about how math relates to reality or not, right? The other thing is that maybe math does relate to reality, but you think it should be a different mathematical formula, like, you know, MV. But it's also just in general that maybe math, you know, they go too far in applying math in the wrong way, right? I mean, I think... It may yeah, not, no, no, I'm I mean, saying, I'm saying, looking at. I, I don't have a problem with 90% of the math. What, 95% of all equations I'd say are rational? I'm just saying that there are clearly ones that are irrational in the sense that I can sort of prove right. the history is irrational. So I'm so just what gonna... about this, though? Can I do this one? So forget a car. We have a rocket. And I've set it up this way on purpose where the rocket is a pusher. It's pushing a mass. So that way, the reason I did this is because this thing has a mass and its fuel is mass. 
and it's burning the fuel and that's complicated right because that's a force versus a mass where they're both changing and i mean but by doing this i'm saying hey we made a rocket we measured how much the force it can when you fire that rocket it's constant so it does a constant force and pushes this mass yeah yeah well you're that's just two trains but yeah fine and f equals mass a in other words, if we did this experiment and we measured the acceleration of the mass, we'd ignore the ship. And then when the ship stopped, the mass would shoot away with the constant velocity, right? So that's why I didn't put it in front, because when it stops, I don't want it to slow it down or have any, you know, so it's pushing in. And if we wanted to calculate what the force was, we could uh, measure the acceleration, you know, that, you know. Well, why don't I just jump ahead? Why don't I so just... after five seconds... It's going, you know, a velocity of, you know, 30 meters per second. I know, but aren't you really... And gonna, we know the force. But how are, aren't you going to be totally dependent on the idea of this being in gravity or in some medium? Because what's no, your... No, it's in space. That's why I know, but it. what is your acceleration number going to be except end up being the velocity? Because the rate of acceleration won't give you the amount of force it took well, to say move I have it. A force. Well, I know. Well, let me let me just say it one more way. I would argue that the force is the momentum, and all you're doing is transferring momentum from gravity or a rocket engine, right? So the rocket engine is shooting stuff out, which is momentum. The equal and opposite reaction is the rocket ship moving. So you shot so much momentum out. You get exactly yeah. the same momentum in the forward direction. So why wouldn't F equal uh, P? Why wouldn't you just say the force well, equals equal the momentum? P because F equals MA and P equals MV. I know, but why aren't they exactly the same? Are, because it, it, as look, you because lost as P. As the rocket is firing, as the rocket is firing, P is going up. Just like velocity. I know, but it's constant, you said. So we have a constant force, which is a constant applied... No, it's a constant force, but a constant force increases your momentum constantly. I know, no, but it's... the Every it's a, Yes, exactly. But the point is I can just add it up as momentum. I can just count how many atoms I shot out the tail at what speed. So I just calculate how many atoms left my exhaust at what speed. And once I have that momentum number, I can just invert yeah. it and say, okay, well, if it's if it's 10 tons per second, then then I know... Well, you're getting into energy. And I'm, the thing about I'm it, saying they're they equivalent. The way they did I'm the saying... Thing. I want to use this to describe... I know, it. and I want to use this as an argument to argue that F equals E equals P. I mean, momentum, force, and energy are all the same look, thing. What do you think about this? A equals F over N. So I accelerate this right and i i want to know what the acceleration was i know but what is that telling you except for a number you can multiply times the mass well it's saying if i want to know what acceleration i'm going to get right in a from a rocket i could take the force the rocket applies right which i could have measured on a different mass i measure the force i know it does one g of acceleration or I mean, uh, not one. Yeah, I guess one g would be fine. And then it's that's going to be per mass. If I divide it by the mass, it'll accelerate slower and slower. In other words, if I have twice as big a mass, the acceleration actually achieved will be half as much. If the mass is five times as big with the same amount of force rocket firing, then the acceleration I will know, be that but, much but, less. But if I put if I put um, M in other words, if I put if I put M V in that equation, then the M's would just cross out and you'd get A equals V. So you'd be done, you know. If I, you want to talk about M V, then I mean that that's where it goes next, um, because of F equals M A. Well, I don't think it's because F equals M A, because what I'm saying is is F equals M A has to equal the same thing as the momentum. And so the total momentum, if you want the total force, if you want the force per the A, whatever the time unit is in your A. So you have a time unit oh, in your uh, yeah. A. Okay. But if you want the total amount of force it took to move that mass, the total force is going to be exactly equal to the total momentum you shot out the back end. The way we're writing these equations, 
the amount of time is already in the A, right? Because what happened is if I know acceleration, then I already know the velocity over time. I'm just saying that you're not getting the total force number. You're just getting you're getting a rate of force. You're getting a rate of force. Yeah. Well, no, a rate of velocity change. Well, you're getting a rate of force. No, because the force is the rate of velocity change no, no, times no, the, the mass. The force is a, a. It's a real thing. There's a certain amount of momentum yes. per second you're shooting right. out of the rocket engine. The rocket engine is losing mass and velocity out of its out of its if tailpipe. If you're pushing an object with a rocket at one g, right? That that's a particular amount of force, and the bigger the mass, the slower its actual acceleration will be, right? I've seen you say that in gravity, the reason it doesn't work that way is because when you have twice as big of of a object, you also have twice as big a force. So that's why they always fall at the same rate. But if you have a rocket in space that can fire at a particular force, then it, the acceleration will change depending on the amount of mass. I, again, but I'm still going to argue, what good would the F equals MA mean? What does it mean if you're saying it's a rate of force? That doesn't, I, I mean, what you want to know is what's the total force it took to move the object. And I'd say the expedient way to get oh, to okay. that, the expedient way to get to that answer is just to measure how much momentum you shot out of the rocket because you're going okay, to get... Well, I'll talk about that if you want. But here, I have I, this, I want to summarize and ask some questions, which however it turns out is fine. But with acceleration, with acceleration, do you agree that the units are how much the miles per hour change per time period. So my acceleration is, I went from 60 miles per hour from zero every you know five seconds. And that that's gonna be my acceleration. So that in other words, it, it's, it's um, meters per time squared. Right, and I would just say it's not universal for all accelerations. The same proportionalities won't exist for everything you're accelerating because of or accelerating against. So everything is changing your velocity. Well, everything is changing. Not, is not going to change it in the consistent manner like gravity does. So all the other forces aren't going to be applied with that consistency. They can be extremely efficient well, but I mean, transfers. So the thing is, I heard you say that gravity was 9.8 meters per second, but that's a velocity. <clears throat> gravity is meters per second squared because it changes the velocity. You understand? I the understand, but, uh, but that's, a, that's, bottom, that's 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 semantics. I, I don't want to argue. I don't want to argue. Velocity is changing per second. I don't want to argue semantics. You've already conceded well, that not. you've heard me argue that I'm arguing yeah, that uh, okay. that heavier objects collect more force. So the the amount of force it takes to move something in gravity. A feather doesn't use up any gravitational force at all to move, and the hammer uses up a lot of gravitational force. No, but I'm force. talking about the, 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 the units, right? So you have acceleration is meters per second squared. I know, but it's a gravity rate. It's a rate. It's a rate. It's a rate. meters per second squared. You're, all you're doing is saying what rate you're applying the force. So what? Well, let me ask you this. Do you understand that meters per second squared is just a way of writing meters per second over second? Well, or, right? or, or, it's, or just velocity saying, or it's just saying second. meters per second times meters per second. Yeah, it does that too. So that's how seconds get squared on the bottom is because when you have meters per second over second, the way that I'm works, just saying is that's so a rate though. That's a rate. It's a rate. It's a rate, though. That, that's the only, how else can you? How could you possibly ever describe yeah, a rate? A rate? Exactly. That, well, that's what I'm saying. All Even rates, all, all rates, I, have to be applied over a measurement yeah, of time. If you agree and understand that there's a rate in velocities, right? But when something with a rate in it also changes, like acceleration, then you get another second. And the way that ends up looking in math is meters per second squared, but it's also meters per second over seconds. And that's how that works. If you have the, the acceleration, there's a thing called jerk. 
that is acceleration over time. So the fact that the acceleration is changing can also be a value and you end up with meters per second cubed. <clears throat> and I'd say it's preposterous. I'd say none of that crap will That's ever get you. The, I'd say none of it's going to get you the right answer. So yes, go ahead and play with it. Right answer. We're because the, the answer, there's no universal acceleration. That's why it can't be the right answer because your rate will never be the well, same. It's a variable. Every That's force, I know, variable. but every force is going to apply that rate differently. So you can't get away with this meters per second squared because you decide to say that that's how the that's how it accelerates. Well, as I just pointed uh, out, a car doesn't accelerate that this way. Is a by definition thing, right? Like there's a, such a thing as acceleration. Do you believe that? I as I just pointed out, a <laughs> car a car does not accelerate, okay, evenly at all. You, no, you're, it it's Fine. completely dependent on how fast the wheels are turning, and the fa if you make the wheels fast turn too fast, it can't bite the road, and they just spin. So you gain nothing from that force. So obviously, it's just about how fast your wheels are going to turn in the end. But and, if I'm in space in a rocket and I fire, a and rocket, I already made the point, I already made the point. Energy, right? right, I already made the point that the force is going to be exactly equal to how much momentum you shot out of the rocket. So if you just count the momentum, yeah. if you just no, count... No, that's true. I want to talk about momentum. Obviously, I'm not a denier of momentum. I, I'm a denier that there's a big argument between momentum How and can energy. there not be a big argument when they get different uh, answers to the same question? How do, you, how do you have not an argument when you get completely different answers to a simple question? I ask you, you know, again, the 10-ton train going 5 miles an hour, the 5-ton train going 10 miles an hour. You say one of them has twice as much energy. Twice no, as much. No. Twice as much. Not a little bit more. Twice as much. It will. It will. If I put a generator on well, the wheel. Well, because if you work these mathematics, you can see that if you send a small thing at a really high velocity, he's doing it again. It will. I'm saying. Well, look, you're you, getting ahead it, of yourself, whereas I'm describing why science says that through parts of the missing link we haven't gone. Well, through and yet. right, and I'm but just trying to kind say. Of stuck, how do you think we should go forward with the fact that you? seem to deny the concept of acceleration as being the change of velocity over time. No, that's not what I said. Okay, what you I do accept it. Then. Well, what I said was everything accelerates differently. Every physical object, every physical thing but you're going to measure, that ir not irrelevant. I mean, yeah, because so they because they don't accelerate evenly. We're talking about all acceleration. It's not so at a rate. Something accelerate evenly for uh, five seconds. No, I'm saying that everything accelerates differently be, based on the, its physical circumstance. So I'm just saying you can't use one formula and apply it, and especially you can't do it in these kinetic uh, experiments. What do you mean? The formula is that it's the change of velocity over time. If the change of velocity is not constant, that's fine. If but I drop, if I just drop, time. I'm just saying, which, how, does your, how is your acceleration, your deacceleration argument at all meaningful in the circumstance where, yeah, you have a train going down the track and I just drop an extra 10 tons into its bucket. And so all of a sudden it just automatically weighs twice as much. All right. Its deceleration is going to be instantaneous. It's not going to be automatic. It can't help but decelerate because now it has all this extra mass that has to be told you need to move. Yeah, but what will happen is its mass, actually, it won't be instantaneous because it'll bounce a little, a, a little bit. But let's say it's near instantaneous. That's fine because it'll just slow down based on its current I, I, I'm just the, saying the, that how do you calculate that? How do you calculate that? Show to me plug the new numbers into the same formula. Well, you're going to get the wrong answer is my because point, Because in though. math, we do things where, you know, we have velocity over time. So it's flying along, and you drop a mass on there, and it's going to go down almost straight, but never exactly straight, and, and go at a slower velocity after that. Right, but we're still saying we have to account for losing half its energy. And my point is, yeah, we do. That there, with there's no, terms. absolutely and no the distance. Is this area underneath. Oh well, you can keep showing me. I, I'm telling that, that there's no example of how that actually physically happened in the real world, though. There's no example of where the energy went. How can it lose half well, its energy? No energy. It doesn't lose energy. You, 
You're mistaken. Oh, it's, well, no, it's my turn. All right, my gonna... turn. My turn to draw. Yeah, no, okay, no, wait, come wait, on. Wait. So the thing is here is that's fair enough because I've been drawing a bunch. But um, before we turn is the thing is, Gary, they say, and I'll say they because I'm representing classical physics, but I don't agree entirely, but so far I do. They say the energy stays exactly the same, and it's the momentum that isn't exactly conserved. But they also say momentum is conserved, and the way that can work is that momentum has vectors, and when the vectors go in opposite directions, they, that, but no, but I'm just saying what they say, they counteract. So momentum is conserved and energy is conserved, but if you want to know how much energy is in the spring, the spring has no momentum when it's locked and red loaded. It doesn't have momentum then. So they wanted a concept saying, besides there, momentum to talk about the ability to create momentum. There's but nothing now you compatible. Go. There's nothing compatible about it. Momentum is energy, okay? Descartes, it is compatible. Descartes thought so. Newton thought so. Uh, all the people on Newton's side thought so. Momentum is energy. Okay, it is not some magical thing. All right, so the simple premise is, is okay, you got, you got 10 tons going 5 miles an hour. You got... Five tons going ten miles an hour. Okay, your kinetic energy momentum says these are two equal objects. If I put a generator on their wheels, I'll get the same amount of electricity or wattage out of these two objects. Same number of joules. Same everything. Okay, and your formula says somehow they're fundamentally different, and that this faster object has exactly twice as much energy in it. Okay, now I'm saying that no matter what spring I put, if I put these two things into a spring, they'll compress the spring exactly the same amount. Okay, this one hits the spring, it'll compress the same amount. This one hits the spring, same exact amount. Every way I attempt to measure this energy, I'm always going to get this equivalency. They equal each other. Okay, your formula keeps saying, no, they have half, the, it, this one has twice as much energy. Even though I can bang it into the spring, replace it with the heavier object and shoot it off, you know, I mean, take the 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 the, the thing that lost half its the, the thing that lost twice as much energy. I can put it on the you know compress the spring with it, replace it with the lighter object, and now it's supposed to shoot off with twice as much energy. So obviously the energy wasn't lost to anything. And and I showed the experiments where they do this with the carts. You know, you put the same size cart on a spring, and both carts leave with 100 joules of energy. You know, 100. And then and then I put a twice as heavy cart over here. Okay, and with the same 100 cart over here on the same spring, and this cart leaves with 100. And we're supposed to believe this one leaves with 200. All right? For no good reason. I mean, no, no, this, this one leaves with 50 because it's heavy. So now it has only 50 joules because it's a heavier cart. Well, we know this is always, it's always the same amount of energy going both ways in the spring. It gives 100 joules this way, it gives 100 joules that way. So I'm just saying that it's totally irrational in terms of the experimental evidence and you're, you're, all this crap about the math works. Well, it only works because you derive it. And my point is, is I know it has to be wrong because I know it gets the wrong answer. So if it's getting the wrong answer, the formula can't be correct. So there's something wrong with your derivative. And the part that just screams to me is, is acceleration is the dangerous concept because it isn't consistent with every object. Everything that you change, it's... Every way you change something's acceleration, running over frogs would slow down the train differently than if I blew on it or if I find some other way to extract the energy. So it's the acceleration and deceleration are really fudgy except in gravity. But in every other circumstance, it's pretty fudgy. Still there? <laughs> you know. Yes, I oh, know. Oh, okay. <laughs> in, in your example, the momentums are the same. Exactly. They have to but be. But the energies would be different. They, your formula says, the yes. The lighter thing has more energy because of its higher velocity. Right, but it doesn't because there's no way but to it ever collect it. Bullet, a bigger bullet charge to get it going at that speed. It would take so... No, 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 no. That's, yeah, no I showed it. Classical physics I showed the experiment. Same energy. energy. 
Same energy yeah. takes this little, the two X object, no. the one X object, same exact amount of energy. That's not what classical physics is saying. What uh, it's saying I, I, is that. Uh, well, I, I've yeah, played yeah. their videos. I've played the videos, Piero. Don't no, tell me. Don't tell me. So. Don't tell me what they're saying. I played I them. I'll show you on my screen. Here's the momentum. They're the same. I, again, where have you get the idea? I'm saying the momentum is different. Did you see the equal sign that no, I wrote you? Your equal I'm going momentum. By what we agree with to get you to agree. agree. We agree. The momentum is the same, right? Right. Duh. Energy. If you calculate the energy, the energy is different. How? How is energy different than momentum? What is momentum if it's not well, I'm energy? Just saying the formula what for is it? What is momentum if it's not energy? I just explained well, how whatever. I can calculate. Let's just say energy is an equation that you can make one half mv squared for kinetic energy, but it's just called that. It has nothing to do with reality. But you can take the mass and the velocity and calculate what the number would be, right? And it has nothing to do with reality. It's right. the only nothing part I agree. Reality, I agree with you. It has nothing to do with reality. That's but right. Classical physics claims it does have something to do, and you disagree. That's fine. I wouldn't say it's classical. I'm describing... I wouldn't call it classical when it's completely anti-Newton. So let's understand. Newton would hate that formula. Newton, Descartes would hate it. They both hated... Okay. I don't, what word do you want to use to talk about the fact that I can take the number one half, I can multiply it by m, and, and I can multiply and, it by But you can't twice. show me a single experiment ever conducted on the face of the earth where they ever collected that extra energy. Show me... I'm not talking about that, Gary. I am. I'm talking about reality. No. I'm talking you're, about reality. You're saying energy in those two objects is the same, correct? You, that we Momentum energy. is energy. I've said it seven times in this video. I've said to you overtly, I think force, energy, and momentum are all the same thing. Equal sign between all of them. They're all exactly the same thing. There is no distinction between a force, energy, and momentum. And that's why we're talking about unit analysis, because there is a difference. For example, momentum actually turns out to equal force times time, and energy equals force times distance. And why would you multiply them? Because you do a force for a particular period of time. Or you do a force for a particular distance. And, and as I just, and that's how and as I just, as I just pointed out, that's how you get wrong answers. Because guess what? The forces, well, we the forces, the forces are not all the same. Yeah, of course you get wrong answers. Nobody the two trains, the, the, the two trains, this train does variable. not have half. You, you're sitting there saying that you don't get a wrong answer, and it's overtly a wrong answer. It's overtly saying this train has twice as much energy. Yet there's no way you can say you could collect it if you can't collect collect the extra energy how it. no show me an experiment then no, show me one single experiment in the not, history of wait, mankind wait, we don't need an experiment to find oh, out if it's we need an experiment to find out if it's right no, yeah, you need an experiment to demonstrate that it's even but possible then it's even possible there's no possibility of it being right so what's being claimed there is that those two objects one would take twice as it would take half as much energy to get the heavy object moving at duh, duh, speed. duh, duh, duh. Throwing a watermelon up in gravity is harder than throwing a baseball. So what? That's not a fact about how no, much... that's not what that, I'm saying. That I'm has saying absolutely... Okay, you have two situations there, right? One lighter ball moving faster and one fa uh, heavier ball moving slower, correct? Right? We're on the same page so far. I've given you Two these situations. analogies. I've given you the analogies. If you are, you're are a betting man. Situations? You're a betting no, man. You're that proud you that you make money at gambling casinos. Okay, so I'm telling you, if I have a, a bowling competition, all right, and I and and I you you you're going to bet on the bowler who's going to knock down the most pins. Guess what? You're not going to be betting on the guy with the eight pound ball. Gary, can I please see if you will? address my step-by-step -step questioning, which is, first of all, I believe we agree there's two situations here, with the light ball moving faster and a fast ball, I mean, and a heavy ball moving slower, correct? Yes. And in, they have in, the same momentum, so in, we're on right. the same page. Yes. Right, so the physics that you are arguing against, that I'm supporting so far, is their claim, our claim, is that it takes less energy to get that heavy ball rolling at that speed 
than it does the light ball thrill at the fast. Show, 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 show me, show me, show me, show me, show me one experiment. Show me one experiment where that's true. Show me one experiment where it took less energy to move the heavy train. I already did show it. I did already did show it. I already did show it. Okay, I did show it. The professor Lewin. What we're doing is we're building up claims that could be tested in experiments. Now, I obviously believe this has been tested for quite a period of time, ballistics and all this stuff, but oh, I don't want to go into that because first let's get down the claims. Like, if you're not going to agree with the concept of acceleration based on the fact that it changes or something, then that's a big deal. That's before we could agree on doing an experiment and agreeing on ahead of time what it would mean when we do it. Yes. So let's just yes, ignore that now and talk about the concepts. Right. So and you should know that what the physics is claiming that you disagree with is that it would actually not that the energy appears or anything. No, it's just that to get a heavy ball rolling at half the speed takes half the energy of a lighter ball rolling. No, that's what it claims. You disagree that it's true. Look, you disagree with it's true. Yes. Is that what they claim? Yeah. Otherwise, you wouldn't have something to disagree with. I don't even think they claim that, frankly. I really don't think they're that stupid to actually claim something that ludicrous. Oh, my God. But you've heard that they claim about the energy of conser uh, the conservation of energy being absolute, uh, right? Well, well, again, this is, this is a separate subject. Absolute. The conservation of momentum would also be conserved. So this is nothing yeah. about conservation. We all agree that conservation law, except I would say gravity is actually being... So they're not saying that energy appears and disappears. Uh, I, I'm not going to argue with you. They're saying it is there, that it's energy. How can you sit there and keep saying that you don't know what the word energy means? Energy is a real thing. That. They're saying it's joules, that it's, that it's, that it's actual watts then i can get twice as many watts out of that's that train that's what they realize. are saying they're saying okay, there's twice so. as many watts in that train i'm saying they will never collect it they'll never show it it'll never happen and ever 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 their equation is garbage it gets the wrong freaking answer so watts is not the same as joules it, yes it is a no, watt, a watt is directly, co no, it's directly convertible right into a watt no. second. Okay, so a joule is, is a watt. Of energy, and when you have an energy line like in an electrical system, you deliver a certain amount of energy per second. Exactly, so yes, watt seconds, watt second. second. Yes, they're all per second for fuck's sake. So that gives them different units. So for example, no, they're not the the, joule, they're not different at all. A watt is exactly the same as a joule. You don't understand units. You don't acknowledge units as a thing. When you multiply things and divide things, I'm saying they're exactly equivalent. The units, that that matters. It is watt it's seconds. Right. It's the same units for fuck's sake. Watts is exactly the same unit. It's watt second, watt minute, watt hour. One joule is one watt second. Just as one right. joule is one joule second. A joule isn't a joule a hour. Watt, a or, watt equals a joule per second. A joule equals a watt times a second. Same difference. No, we're talking about why you why you multiply things. I, I, I'm saying to you, uh, guess what? A pound is exactly the same thing. So you could just say J equals W equals pound. So power is watts, and that's joules per second. That makes joules equal power times seconds. So if you want to know the total power used... I'm, I'm saying the constant, hour, the constant the is irrelevant. The only part that matters is the part you can change. So obviously it's the same. They're all constants for fuck's sake. The watt is a constant. The okay, seconds are a constant. Really basic. What is your opinion on square feet? Why are we allowed to multiply? Oh, I hear you're, you're using you're using dimensions. There's three dimensions. That's why you can square dimensions. Is because there's three of them. You can square the two and then go to the third cubed. Okay, so yes, that's perfectly legitimate to square a dimension. You can't square a time. So velocity equals distance over time, right? Well, you're doing it again no. because you're going to say time equals time times time. So I'm, I'm going to again, I'm going to protest squaring the time because what you're saying is no, it's 
It's 10 meters per second per second. That's not squaring. Well, well veloc okay, acceleration is velocity change. You could put it this way, delta velocity over delta t. That's the way people make it more accurate. It's the change of distance over the change. Right, of exactly. That's completely benign in the sense so, that so, I would argue, but I'm arguing it's not going to give you the real answer. It's only going to give you a generalization over that period of you established as time. So if I establish so, time as three minutes, okay, I'll get a different number than if it's two minutes or if it's one is minute. Is velocity the same as distance? Is velocity the same as distance? Of course not, because okay. velocity is a rate. So, but is acceleration equal is the same as velocity? It is in some explicit sense, in the men, in the sense that but well, the exact you always formula. you always measure an acceleration using a velocity. So, the only way to measure something's acceleration That's why I is get to a measure. Velocity use the distance, and all we really have is all we really have is distance, mass. And time. Right, that's the only part we agree on. Yes, I agree. Those are all the relevant features. And everything like power is all in the ability to move a mass over a certain time, a certain distance. Right. And power is the same thing as force, is the same thing as energy, is the same thing as work, is the same thing as momentum. So it's I all the same. So I explain how they came up with um, how Joule came up with the the power units that we ended up with that made people think maybe kinetic energy was different than momentum. well no joule had nothing to do with the kinetic energy formula. well you know joule joule studied heat right its relation to power so all they did so was why is that well because oh, well, they want oh, to make... oh fuck you're gonna keep talking right i, I mean okay, go ahead. I, i'm, I'm just saying i really don't need to hear the history because i've really read all of it so you don't, right, you don't need that. to tell me that you don't need to tell me the history. The point is, is from the 1600s to the 1800s, it is kind of funny that physics didn't know that heat was a form of momentum. So my argument to you is you can only create heat by taking it from something's momentum. Something has to have momentum, it has to interact with something, and then you can have heat. But heat is always the byproduct of momentum changes. So, well, not in chemical energy. When you have well, energy I'm afraid it really, it, really, it really is in terms of what you're doing to the atoms. You're moving the electrons with momentum. They move at a velocity. That velocity is momentum. So it is still momentum, but yes, we're really not not talking about chemistry we're talking about lateral uh, uh, lateral motion in three dimensions we're not really doing chemistry right now so we're not talking about chemical energy we're talking about when something's moving that we can physically see an object's moving it has momentum and the fact is if it makes heat it made it out of its momentum it can't it can't make heat without losing momentum momentum is Heat is momentum, and they didn't know that till the 1800s, which is kind of funny. Well, but some heat is infrared radiation. It's still caused by the momentum exchange. Yeah, it's by, it's just it's, it's just, just momentum leaking. Okay, so you if see, I they were but oh. here's the thing they had momentum, but they were they had a an engineering problem of how to turn no, burning no, fuel no, no, no. into a moving object. So this has nothing to do with the creation of this formula. It's all way back to Leibniz. Leibniz is the cause of this. This goes back to Huygens. This is long before they had any okay, engineering the problems. The fact that Joule, for a fact, said that this concept of work equals force times the distance. Now, times the distance means that I'm going to do a force for, how long do I do the force? A distance. And then I'm pushing another little cart that doesn't have a motor. And the question is, what's its velocity? What's its momentum? Yeah, yeah no, work is just telling you about when you're yeah. acting, when you're working against inertia. This has nothing to do with the kinetic energy formula. Zero. This is what has the unit that we call a joule. I, well, I'm sorry, I know, but the joule, we don't need the goddamn unit. 
They didn't have a unit back in Newton's time. They all they said was seventy five. No, they, did no, they the didn't. They, they just said he has a unit. I'm saying. Oh, heat. I'm not going to argue with you. They had no idea about any kind of heat crap or any of that kind of crap. They just said it had seven units of velocity. That's all they cared about. It was seven units. They didn't worry about what the units were. They just all agreed. The momentum, they momentum agreed. Oh, momentum have a unit? Uh, of course, of course, momentum has units. And what is the unit? Pounds. It's kilogram meters per second. Pounds. No, it's pounds. Pounds, pounds, kilograms. Pounds, I don't care. Kilograms. Hour. That's all it no, is. It's kilograms. It's just pressure. That's all momentum is. Is pressure. So you just talk about it in terms of how many. But look. Okay, so I have a ten-pound object. Its momentum is twice as big if its velocity is twice as big. So part of its unit is the velocity. Exactly half of its, half velocity, half mass. That's why momentum right. works. Because, because the momentum is not just the mass, it's the mass times the velocity. They're equal is the point. When you multiply mass times velocity, the unit is mass times the velocity unit. It, I, right, but but it doesn't it doesn't matter what the unit is because it there's does all, no it doesn't. I can make up any does. unit. It doesn't matter whether that I call it a watt. Sense. It doesn't well, matter whether I call it a watt or a pound or a calorie or a kelvin. It doesn't matter what energy unit I use. It doesn't fucking matter as it long as it's a standard. As long as we have comparisons between 100 grams dropping a meter and 10 pounds dropping a meter. As long as we know, oh yeah, this one's going to be 25 times as heavy as this one. We'll know the ratio and that's all we need to know. So it doesn't matter whether I call it watts. It doesn't matter. If no one ever invented joules, we would live without it because we it could just say what the name is, but you have kilogram meters per second. It could be pounds, miles per hour. It doesn't. But it can just be time, pounds. It just needs to be. It just no. It, no, you don't. All you need is pounds. Pounds. All you're no, doing you is increasing. Over time. No, it's no. This is a joule, Piro. Wake up. A hundred, a hundred <coughs> grams falling one meter is a joule. That's exactly its definition. 102 grams falling one meter. The impact weight is a joule. So okay, that's a so joule. As far as right I can there. Remember, you're a unit denialist, but not about velocity. You do believe velocity has a unit of miles per hour or meters per second. It's just it nonsense to say. It's nonsense to say. It's nonsense to say. I'm a fucking a unit denialist when I just told you yeah. they're all the same goddamn unit. A watt, yeah, a, a jewel, uh, and a pound are all the same thing. How am I denying? Where am I denying? Show me. Can velocity, Gary. Can velocity have any unit, or is it just momentum that can? Can velocity have any unit? Any unit that it wants, yeah. Well, I mean, anybody can describe it as miles per hour or, or meters per second or f a frog, a length, average length of a what frog. What about nothing for nothing? What? What about nothing for nothing and you just ignore the units and it's just the number? I'm saying you have to have a unit. I never argued right. that you didn't have and a so unit. I'm saying, I'm saying the invention of the jewel has nothing to do with this conversation. The it kinetic does. energy formula was invented 150 years before the jewel. So what? We're talking about. So what? I'm, I'm just saying that obviously, obviously, it had nothing to do with why that stupid equation exists. It existed for 150 years before Joule existed. The point is, the Joule is where we get the F times D. I, F times I, D is M A times D. And again, if you, if you want to, if you want to just do this force times distance you crap, you don't want to face it because you're in denial of the units matter. That's where the unit comes from that they then got in kinetic energy. I think it's just. Per meter I think it's just ludicrous to have a, an equation where you say W equals F times D. I think that is so so well, we so vacuously so vacuously silly that you could apply no, that well, in every circumstance. I, I, I wonder how honest you want to be right now, Gary, in the sense that we discussed the fact that F times D. And that seems pretty honest. Uh, F times D would be applying a force. For a certain distance, so it's like, hey, I got my force rocket. Turn it on. How how long until I get to the end of the football field? 
turn on the force, turn it on for a particular distance, and that is the work that I want to do because I want to move something for a hundred yards. Therefore, okay, okay. I need so, to know so how much force it takes to move at that distance. Right, That's and th and this work. gets you to these ludicrous circumstances where you would say you do no work. So if I forced you to hold up ten pounds for four days, okay, hold it in your hands for ten days. Okay, technically you didn't do any work. Now, do you believe you didn't do any work? Well, technically you, you would be wavering and your muscles would be doing work. Oh, well, yes, technically yeah, you are you doing work. You didn't go any distance, though, Piero. So by, by so your formula, work. by your formula, you did zero work. No, because the moving back and forth or your wavering would be the where the work went. Well, we'll go ahead and see, let's see the calculation for your wavering because then you're going to have to concede that gravity is constantly accelerating us and we're actually moving on the surface of the earth up and down. So if you if you're going to grant Here's me an interesting if thing, you're going to grant me that point, point you're Gary, let's maybe we can uh, both not change the subject, but change the subject a little bit. I did an interesting thing. I was thinking, well, why did Jewel say force times distance why not force times time like i want to know if i apply a force for a particular amount of time and then that would be f times t so i ran it out and guess what f f t is i called it a for action it's momentum mv because m times a that's f so mat and then the a becomes v over t the t's cross out V is D right. Over so, D, so you're so going right, D over D right, right. So you're going right back to what I said 40 minutes ago when I said exactly the same thing. With well, the rocket so, ship, with the rocket ship example, so what I'm saying the is rocket they are ship. Compatible. When the, you take the F, so the thing is like this: if I have a um, a graph of this kind of thing, so I have F versus T, and I have F uh, versus D right and let's say they're constant the f is constant and i do it for a certain time period then f times t is the area of this box right f is that geometry right like that's f times t because you know it's an f times t box that's how the I, I, I would say this is only applicable in circumstances where you can have any of these constants there's no constant force well, no this is just math right now so that you have f t and, and this is the area, and this area equals the momentum, and this area equals the work. Now, why would you use one or the other? I'm saying the main reason is because they have problems figuring out how a pile of wood that could move, apply a force for a time or a distance, how that had momentum. All of the kinetic oh, energy you know, work done in the old days by the old guys didn't explain how gasoline had energy in it. They needed to know energy when it was stored in other potential forms. This has forms. nothing to do yeah, with this has nothing happened. to do it with the kinetic happen. energy formula at all. It has nothing to do with it, so you just won't stay on the subject and it's just no point because it has nothing well, let's talk about kinetic chemical energy you want crap. to talk about chemical energy, it's a completely different form of the energy. It's it's in a, the form of speeding electrons. So we have to worry about the momentum of electrons. But I'm just yeah, saying, why get into exactly. that? Okay, my argument is a simple argument that you have momentum. If I'm a bowling ball going down the alley and I put raisins on the alley, you would concede, right, that hitting the raisins will absorb my momentum and the bowling ball will slow down, right? Anything that I have to interact with as a bowling ball will slow me down. I'll lose momentum. I have to use my speed, okay, to interact with anything. So if I heat anything, if I make any sound, if I do anything at all to vibrate anything, I am going to lose my momentum. Some percentage of my momentum has to be sacrificed for every little bit of it. That's the whole point yeah, that they That's the point they realized in the in the early, you know, the late 1700s, they realized that heat is momentum. That heat is a byproduct, okay? It is stealing your energy. But not all kinds of energy are momentum. 
I'm just saying that all forms of heat. He and can, he, and I know, but chemical energy, and chemical energy yeah. doesn't. Oh, again, it doesn't matter where it radiates. It doesn't matter how the heat leaves. The how it leaves has nothing to do with the subject. So here's the thing. When we have the coiled spring, I'm going to show you this, which you asked, and it relates to what you were saying. But first, before I get back to how it relates to your actual last comment, when you have the coiled spring, the force of the spring is K times X, where X is the distance of, you know, we discussed this earlier, maybe before we went on air, surely, when we were setting up the whiteboard. Now, because of that, the force versus the distance, it goes down. Right, so if you had F times X, that would be this whole square here. But because the force goes down, you end up just with this part of the square actually being the total force. I think you're on the and wrong screen. so that's screen. why you get half times the force times D, and that unit is where the kinetic energy unit comes from and why it's related to this because they studied it with spring so it all got calibrated uh, i i don't constant. don't don't pretend to me that there's some experiment demonstrating any of this i compress those springs exactly the same and all i do is i change the mass i put on the spring so i take i put a twice as heavy mass on the spring you're going to argue it has half as much energy Okay, same exact compression, no, same, same exact no, see, compression, where, same okay, exact here, compression. I can help you out. Oh, please. The physicists are not saying that. Go the suck eggs. Spring, Eat no, shit and die. Spring. Okay, I'm not going to take being patronized, asshole. I'm not patronized. Yes, you I'm are. Saying, yes, look, you are. I don't look, have to accept you're that. you that I claim something I don't claim. Well, I'm I, arguing with physics. You. I don't argue that I claim something I don't I'm, claim. Uh, well, the Go formula, claim it, the formula you, you overtly says it. The, oh, I'm just telling you, nobody's claiming that. Not me, nor the physicists, not Walter Lewin. Okay, that's nope, an absolute lie. lie. An absolute well, lie. You misunderstood. What they no, claim is absolute lie. Momentum. Absolute momentum lie. A fucking lie. Liar, liar, liar. That's not what they overtly said. I've played their videos over and over again. I played the Physics Girl video at least seven times on the eight times on this channel. At least eight times. I could play Professor Lewin saying exactly the same thing. So it doesn't matter whether she's no, a you either misunderstood No, I misunderstood nothing. I've played the videos. There's I'm nothing there's the no doubt they're energy. saying it has twice as much yeah, energy. Exactly. No I'm doubt about it. Okay, but here's the thing, Gary. Are you familiar with this energy equation for compressed spring? I'm saying it's irrelevant. Spring. It's irrelevant to this conversation. I'm talking about the spring being compressed but exactly the same. Of course, I understand that, that, you dumb fuck! So Jesus fucking Christ, we already had this conversation. No, come on. There, You're being an asshole. We had this conversation. I typed this in text before we had well, this conversation. Is, well, science agrees that the energy of a compressed spring is a particular amount of energy. When it pushes a ball the same amount of energy will be turned into kinetic energy. What's different is the velocity, and what's different is the momentum. That's what you don't like, is that energy does not convert into momentum in a linear way. All right, well, I'll just you play, like I'll just play, I'll, I'll play that clip of you, and then I'll play all the physicists saying well, something entirely different, because that's exactly what their formula demands. The formula demands that you have to believe it's you're, you're twice as much energy. That they oh, okay, that. well, well, well I'm going to draw it again. I, I, I'm just going to draw it again so everybody's clear on what he's... He's making this assertion that I misunderstand. Okay, I have a few more minutes, but maybe a half an hour. That would be too hours. I do not misunderstand at all. I've played the videos. I've read the history. This is not my misunderstanding. You're just trying to pretend that this stupid double formula, this formula duality is not incompatible. It's overtly incompatible. So you're saying if I compress the spring exactly two inches, and I compress the spring two inches, same exact spring, compress two inches, I put the twice as massive object here, this one only has one M, okay? And then I shoot them, they have the same friction coefficient, exactly the same, uh, it's as, as frictionless as possible, let's say, Okay, the fact is this will have one half the velocity, this will have a one velocity, all right? And that's what's gonna happen, 
All right, and they're going to have exactly the same momentums, but if I do the kinetic energy formula on these two objects, this object is going to have half as much energy. The twice as heavy object is going to be said, you know, it only has this, though, half it's, 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 the joules, half the watts, here, half here, the power, like half the something. work capacity. It here, only has here, half the of that. Thing, wait, the square thing, you stick with always the, the double mass, but because of the square thing, the four becomes two and blah, blah, blah. Use different masses. Use one M and five M. It doesn't five matter. M. No, I'm using. Yeah, I'm does. using. I'm doing the ones that show your formula doesn't work. It's shown no, that it does doesn't. It it absolutely pages. doesn't work. It absolutely gets the wrong answer. Well, do you understand that the reason you say it doesn't work is because you wanted to get the same momentum? No, because I've proven that it gets the same momentum. I've shown the experiment where the well, momentum show me the is video the same. Of your experiment on it. I showed the Professor Lewin video. Well, he proved he did an experiment for you that showed that the no, he, he did. Was the same. Oh, yes, he did it in the sense that there's no lot, there's no other okay, way to look at it. I already sure I did it. it. I, I already did like it. I already did it. The spring was compressed exactly All the same. Two the even top. objects on the side. They both leave at 100 joules. Okay, I put one heavier object over here, a lighter object over here. It leaves at 100 joules. This one has only 50 joules. And we know that's not true because if I could Joel, press the spring at the same uh, amount, I'll get 100. Because, you know, Walter Lewin's a sec I mean, hashtag me too. I understand all that crap. I don't like <laughs> Professor Lewin particularly. I'm just arguing that... I like him except for boy. <laughs> oh, I'm sad. You do. That's like Bob Barker. Find out about Bob Barker. He was kind to animals. Had a few sexy ladies on his show, but I didn't think hashtag me too, but him too. Yeah, well, you wouldn't. Anyway, um, you can cash at me the $2,000 because I have the 1,000 subscribers. That was your requirement. And um, it was nice doing this with you. A thousand? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Isn't that yeah, what yeah. you said? I saw your notice, and if you have a thousand, seventeen hundreds, or if you're savvy, you could get two grand. And boom! I thought it said a hundred thousand, but oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I oh, think it's a little right. off. That's right. Yeah, a little bit off. Right. Yeah, it's close well, though. Well, percent. So wait, two hundred bucks then. Boom. Well, I would pay you if you would stay on the subject. <laughs> I would actually pay you if you would stay on the subject. I know, but I just and you do. Let's finish up with that because you must have gone through the same thing. You had ten or five times more people than me, pretty much the whole time. And it went through like where I was eligible to be a partner, to, to a ask to be a partner. And then they gave me the partner and then they took the partner away, right? Like I just chose never to monetize because, you know, I, it's like there's a lot of liberals right now, uh, ultra liberals that are, um, you know, oh, there's sellout. Sam Cedar's a sellout. He goes on a thing. It's like, dude, you're monetized. You're monetizing your podcast. Anybody that monetizes is selling out which is fine you're making a profession of it but just admit you're you know you're a marketer it matters who's paying you all of that stuff don't act like you're pure because nobody actually pays you yet except for you know a super chats and and i feel like there was you know the original youtube they didn't let us monetize so there was an actual culture of people that didn't monetize with about uh of among us, only about a third of them wanted to monetize. Well, I guess I, like I said, ideally, like I would have. I, I, I would have liked the uh, YouTube that start off. We just pay to be producers, you know, and you just yeah, pay for for now, your still. reach, you know, because it just it is. Well, I mean, well, ever, we advertising is always. Can. Is advertising is always insulting your audience, right? Are you doing anything other than just insulting your audience by saying, I'm going to make you pay more for the product because the company has to put these stupid ads on here to get attention. So not only are you going well, to have plus, to... Plus, you know what I've been thinking about? You know, ads, like, I've been watching these medical ads they didn't let on TV when, I, when we were kids, right? But, like, there's one for Crohn's disease, and it's always about how embarrassed you should be because your kid shot a, a three-point thing at the, and you were in the bathroom. You know, and they try to make people embarrassed, right? And the medical ones just out and out do it. Like, you've got rosacea. Oh, you're so embarrassed, but now you can meet your in-laws, and which is bullshit. Like, that should be illegal to get people stress on that shit. And I was thinking, too, even if you don't have those diseases, that gives you the stress of, like, oh, my pimples. And then the, if you think about it, every single one of those ads that has a big, expensive Humvee, or even going to McDonald's with the sexy girlfriend or anything. It's all designed to make people stressed out 
And like, it's no wonder that people are stressed out because you and me see that happening. But a lot of people are living in the middle of the consumer. Like they think of the world like a big mall and they're so in it that imagine how stressful actually caring what ads say because it's annoying to even be exposed to but if people actually care and that is why people are so stressed out i mean that's what's sending schizophrenics over the top and and probably addicts and shit well it doesn't do psychology any good to be manipulated and that's all this is it's just gross manipulation exactly. and Whatever it doesn't it, it doesn't have any ethics at all i mean it's just basically what works and it's lowest common denominator and blah 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 and it's just yeah no i'm just saying we're paying for it which is the, the most disgusting part you're you have a whole industry devoted to the creation of these commercials more money is spent making commercials than making the tv shows i mean it's that bad I mean, you know, you're paying so much for this, the, you know, the luxury of, of having content on the Internet. I mean, and we, we should pay so much less if we just paid for it up front instead of renting it from businesses. Well, the thing is, I did a calculation like eight years ago where if I paid for it myself on Amazon or Rackspace or whatever, I forget which one I used, it would have been like 80 bucks a month. And so by not monetizing, I'm kind of getting my freebie from the man, right? As opposed to people that get monetized and then they chalk up your, you know, they have the YouTube apocalypse and now you don't have a living. You know, instead of getting bitter, I'm like, 80 bucks a month. Of course, it didn't cost them that. But you know what I mean? If I would have had to got it, it's a less wholesale <coughs> type rate. And they were spending money on us. But the thing is, now it is different in the fact that people could drop. It's still true, the design from a few years ago, where people could drop videos on you know, Google, free amount of Google space and free amount of, uh, what is well, that? Well, the, the real key off. is is that they're not indexing any of it. So the fact is, is you, then, you can't get any no, view no, space. No, but that's what I'm saying. The index is for free. Like, I already buy Amazon stuff just to have because I program where that kind of database with a million videos and stuff and or millions and millions, that takes hardly any space now. It's actual videos and streaming that is was always the expensive part keeping an index and then what you could do is share that index so you could have more than one site that you hit and it's still easy to do i mean i'm going to get around to doing it but the main thing too i've been wanting to do for years i don't know if you remember is i would like to hit like a 12 dollar a year flat rate like literally you pay 12 dollars, so it's a whole year and the company knows it's 12 dollars, and a dollar a month should cover everything you would need and then um and then there's all kinds of details we've talked about over the years, like what kind of moderation. But we sort of have an overlap, if I remember. But you have some differences. But mostly my moderation is you relegate people to a dustbin where only the people that dig out in the sewer, you know, they dig down and go in the sewer can see them. So you can moderate. But if you had an affinity group, like if, um, you know, I don't know, Venom Fang X, relegated you and me to the sewer and he only saw us when he went down in there you know we could relegate him to sewer of course i wouldn't because i want to keep track of all those other groups but i might you know relegate other people to that <laughs> yeah I, like well that. I, obviously i wouldn't yeah i'm, I'm for freedom but the freedom doesn't have it I, there's nothing about the freedom that says you can you know you can have a bat phone in my house well, and i have to, to i have to pick up the comments for example right there's an argument that's saying no comments should be whatever they want but you're like, well, no, you should be able to regulate comments. And what I'm like is like, you should be able to regulate comments. Well, I can't anonymously comment. I'm just speech. saying free speech doesn't include, like, I can't put a loudspeaker in Times Square and then from New Jersey just spout shit out of the speaker. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you know. It's like, I don't know if you've ever seen how Reddit basically works now, but basically if somebody wants to comment on your videos and you won't let them, they should just have a comment board in their own space. That they comment well, on that's you know that. I mean? That would that's be the real. I, I mean, obviously, obviously, obviously you know, I would split the country up. Kind of. I, I would leave all the crappy comments if there was an actual. If YouTube actually did what it should do, which is make it all public, so at least I know where the troll has been. What else is he doing? You know what? That's another thing you said where we agree on so many of these kind of basics about the medium. Where the fact that Google and YouTube have gotten to the point, it used to be sacrosanct, like everything we put on the net, not only was it there to see, and if it was deleted, it said was deleted, but it was in the Wayback Machine and not even really deleted. It felt like, yeah, it's going to be permanent. Why? Because there's obsessive compulsive people that save all this shit. Yay. But 
And that's still kind of true, but th those people that aren't kind are getting fucked over by the fact that YouTube will show you a comment. You know what I'm talking about? You were talking about you can't see your own. You can see your own comment, <laughs> but other people can't see it, and they don't even tell you. And it's like you can be. They really. You never chat in the super chats, or I mean, in the chat window, probably. But they really do it in there, like Diamond and Silk. You know, you you have to experiment. Like you have to go. I've been blocked. And you go, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you're like, oh, okay, no, I haven't. But then you go. They don't say anything, and you're like, oh, I haven't been blocked. But you don't know because they could be. No, you're not blocked. But we hate you, you motherfucker. We're not answering you. And you don't even know. And it's like that's against the the actual like ethos, the netiquette of. If you want to treat someone like they're a motherfucker, you tell them they're a motherfucker. You don't just like shadow ban. That is like, oh. Yeah, and make it all public. I mean, make my law, make no make my ban, make yeah. my block list public. Have have a my my no block shadow. my block list should be public. Every single comment that I make should be publicly yeah. viewable. I mean, this whole unaccountability shit is the part that really really bugs me. I mean, why you really have to be? You can have all the well, free. You can have all the free speech you want, yeah. but if you're not going to sign your name to it, fuck you. I'm well, not listening. The interesting thing you're saying there because I what I add to that is a filterability. So like. If I wanted to block you, it would show up in my public block list. And it would be a way of saying, block this motherfucker, he's dangerous. Whereas if I didn't want to be on the record and blocking you, I would still have filters. They're like, oh, filter my own. You know, I don't really mind if John says, I'm going to filter Gary out. Then they know why Gary is missing. And they can always turn off the filter when, they, when somebody else mentions Gary's going off again. What? And they look. Or they never look. Whatever. That's up to them. But the idea that YouTube, especially some stupid, artificially stupid, it's not intelligent, algorithm is somehow deciding that, and it's so weird because you know they want us to have conflict, right? That raises up their clicks to have conflict. So why are they deleting your video, I mean your comment on your own channel, which again, the AI will know it's both of you. Obviously, when you log in, they tell you you own them all. What the fuck? It's it's like well, you, it's, well, you it, wouldn't it's even got think it would. Something malevolent mixed with something idiotic. It's like, all like, you know, it's almost like, like none of the. It's like all the people at Google don't have YouTube channels. Like they don't even know how this really works. But you're saying how could they have not fixed that? You know, to have a glitch that stupid where well, it would actually it would them. actually block my own comments. I mean, it's just well, so they stupid. Don't have YouTube channels in the sense that I think that they visualize. Well, I just um, mean they YouTube. never they never test their their algorithm. I'm just saying it's amazing how little testing they must have done because the glitches are so overt. You know, the thing is too that what we really need, all we really need, is the video reply thing back. That was like enough. When you had a minimum viable product, like the original YouTube sucked. It wasn't really good. But I know, but imagine, so imagine what the because trolls. The video reply. Would, would imagine what the trolls would do to that now, though. I mean, they would just be spamming everything. Well, that's why you have people pay, which makes it easier to, you know, to terms of service and and block people, right? And if you deal with trolls that sign up and pay a dollar $12 but then you know at least you get $12 per time you have to have a uh, well I still I still rather that. charge the producers than charge the consumers so that's still that's still a difference in how oh, I look oh, at it but, but maybe consumers can go to reddit for their and make their own news group and if you want to comment in the system no, you're one of the producers, or you could be a producer and pay well, well, look, you know, I, videos, but that's what you do to... Well, well, right? we, because and then we want to make it sustainable, and frankly, I don't want to make a lot of money. I want to keep it almost an unmonetized thing, but as I said, I always thought there should be a contest that's like basically a vacation to go to a place where you have these debates in person and stuff, or maybe some other kind of a cash prize but not, if you want to make a living off of it, you could have a Patreon, you could write books, but there would be no monetization on this site except for, I think it would be cool if people could vote for their favorites to have, even if it was a virtual online conference once a year, right? You win the right to go to this conference, and if it costs money to go actually to a place in the world like Hawaii, then it would be paid for. Yeah, no, I, I'm all for, you can create interest, so I'm just saying, you know, but the the whole purpose, yeah, is just to create the 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 public square. I mean, you're just trying to make synthetically what should already exist, which is the non-commercial alternative. You know that we never got. 
Right. right, and the trick is non-commercial but sustainable, so money's involved and stuff, but basically, um, you know, a, a different... Um, yeah, well, I think you can generate money that. Pays I mean, for different I'm just pay. saying that I obviously... It's fine to be like a professional philosopher, scientist, and, you know, and you could take part in this community, but in this community, you're part of the non-monetized, you're here because you actually give a shit. I know, you're but you just... to say things your audience wants to hear. You're saying what you believe, and we know we can tell. We can tell. Come on. Yeah, I and just. We could have committees of us with a seed community that would kick out, or not kick out, but segregate to a different area. If we got a Dennis Prager who is a conservative but really is trying to be a shill. Like I, here's the thing too. It's like these conservatives are making me realize I've been adamantly for pro free speech. I've let plenty of white supremacists stay in my comments as long as they don't say they're going to kill anybody and stuff like that. But really, they, they're relating, they're creating this problem for me, which is I don't believe in the right to lie. That's fraud. You don't have a right to defraud somebody. So you could lie if you're not defrauding somebody. And what is the defrauding thing about a lie is did you get a dollar from them? So you can lie and not monetize. And I go, you're an asshole. But okay, Constitution. But making money off of lies, I don't think so. And so that's a kind of a difficulty um, just in general I'm bringing up. I'm curious on your take. I think on our website it wouldn't be a problem because if you make people pay and get invested, there's ways to police Well, I'm just that. saying all the producers can do the policing. That's all I'm saying is that, that that's... But do you think people have a right to lie as free speech or no? Can we discriminate and tell the difference between... Yeah, no, I'm, no I, of you course. You have a right to say what you really believe. You don't have a right to say things you don't well, Like believe. I said, you have a right to yell fire in a theater if there's a fire. You don't have a right to lie. Exactly. That's so, what so, I was thinking about. That's uh, one of the things that turned me on to, wait, there is a thing here between lying and not. Right, the lying is not a protected speech. So I'm just saying that we already have that from slander and libel law. So we already know it's not protected speech. So quit pretending that lying is okay. But yeah, as a society, they're allowing way too much of that, you know, because they're not prosecuting liars. And that's really something that should be kind of important to us constitutionally. Well, and the thing is, you don't have to get into the gray area. There's these liars that are like criminal banks to liars and politicians that lie. Where well, well I think Alex Jones. Illegal, I you know? think you Alex Jones. Into, I lied to my wife. Do I go to jail? No, we're, you know, don't even worry about it. We got people that broke the law by lying. I and, mean, you, you could know, you could argue uh, that flat earthers are liars, and you know, but that's a well, that's, no, because that's the whole thing about psychotically believing something. Well, I know, but we, you, you, you would agree. I think lying, I think but, you would agree that most flat earthers don't well, believe no, it. The people that are making money off of flat Earth, I think you can go after spirit science or whatever. Well, I'm just saying that you. Pumping. I think you would agree they are not being honest. Okay, they're just playing a social game. Right. Okay, they're well, the ones that monetize. Especially well, well, I'm saying leaders. even the ones that don't monetize are only doing it to be a fuck up. They're just trying to fuck up the establishment. Well, what about the fact of when you don't monetize, but you like get followers and get the social cachet and things like that? But well, I mean, I'm just saying that I, I think they're obviously just people who like doing the anonymous thing. They like to being disruptive. So that's all they're doing it for is because they're trolls. Okay, they're trolling science. That's all they're doing, right? They're just having fun trolling scientists. Um, so, but but I'm just saying, I, I would say that's true for 99% of them. I mean, they really don't believe the flat Earth. It's impossible to believe it realistically, rationally. It just can't be believed. But you know, other. Well, uh, here's the thing. It's about um, Jesus. I forgot his real name, but the dissident scientist. How isn't the expanding Earth flat Earth level? I mean, where's the mass come from? It to me, it seems like. Like all their other particle stuff, I'm like, oh, okay, so you're visualizing this abstract particle space differently. Fair enough. But an expanding Earth... Well, it requires a lot is more... Is that any less <laughs> than flat Earth? Well, 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 I don't think it's... it's, it's not Am as, I missing something? Yeah, I don't think it's, it's quite... plausible? Well, I'm just saying we have a lot of evidence against flat Earth in terms of... We, if we didn't have images of the of from space, then flat Earth would become more and more viable, right? So if you take away the yeah. opposing evidence, it becomes more and more viable. So obviously, expanding Earth is viable in the sense that obviously the the initial continent did expand. So, uh, you know what I mean? So, yeah, you, you're arguing about... Well, right, you're basically the, the arguing... Part, the geometric part where they fit together... 
I get that, yeah. But I mean, just what about the, how could the Earth be expanding? Because maybe a nuclear process creating mass, but it's just like, they kind of say that, but it's creating water and mass, yeah, like, I know they I don't see how that's physically. Well, they don't have a way. They don't. They don't have that. They don't have that. But they don't need it in the sense that we can't also argue origins and history of Earth beyond the same argument about the fact that well, apparently a very large thing hit the Earth and left a big giant hunk of mass on it, and the mass broke into pieces and spread. That's sort of you know what I'm saying. It's sort of got to be somewhere in the geometry. Why well, was I guess it? My, I guess to understand it is not quite flat Earth, is that flat Earth breaks a geometric understanding of what we've seen various ways. Well, I'm just saying there's Whereas so much this evidence. Does, this is more the other way. Like if somebody wanted to look at the puzzle pieces as a geometric thing, it does make sense sense to say Look, yes exactly what exactly well i mean i'm just saying but that where would it come from it's the same geometry of and then the other thing is they've got that lighter gravity you know because they say the earth was spinning faster so it had like 10 or 20 percent i forget the number of lighter gravity back in the dinosaurs yeah and then all the, the dinosaurs had to have so that goes with them going no it was 20 percent less mass right and just you could imagine like well how could you have enough you know the whole point is is that the old atmosphere was full it had three times more more oxygen in it you know what I mean the, in, in, you know because of all the water and all the rest of the stuff in the atmosphere it had twice as much oxygen you gotta kind of love and that's why there was dinosaurs is because there was twice as much oxygen in the air you know yeah dinosaurs don't work without that and then you couldn't have that with a light atmosphere so if you're light in the atmosphere David that's his name yeah, yeah. one thing you're gonna like about David is um, that he's being able to bond with his dad <laughs> yeah, well, well, I guess so. my dad passed away just recently. I forget if I mentioned to you, but it's like uh, it must have been a year. Yeah, well, mine was two two years. So yeah, yeah. a couple, but recent it for old people like us. So, yeah. but um, but anyway, yeah, um, I had some bonding with my dad, also some differences, but uh, it was pretty good. But um, I never got to like do. Uh, you know, dissident science with him. That's really like, what the heck? And his dad's a chemist or something, I think, originally, right? No, he was electronics, electricity. Electronics. And your dad was a chemist. My, yeah, chemical engineer. Yeah, and his dad was, um, yeah, so like, um, yeah, like probably soldering and hooking up electric uh, electronics components with uh, David's dad, I think. Yeah. So I guess you don't probably think much of their theory, or I mean, I see certain things about it that's like okay, but well, yeah, no, I mean, it's too much of it. They don't have any. They don't, you know. He says there's no such thing as charge, and you're just saying you can't say there's no charge. You can say I have an answer for the phenomenon, but you can't say the phenomenon yeah. doesn't exist. Like it's well, like saying there's no gravity. Of course, the there's gravity. You, they agree with you with their first subparticles and pressure, and then they go. There's another level of particles, and you're like, what? Yeah, and no, then, no twice, like, twice, the, another level of particles, twice the like, speed of light. Yeah, you know, the and speed. Then they're like, and it goes on for infinite. And you're like, fuck your turtles. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, uh, the space is the speed of light squared. You know. But me, I, I like that part because I'm like, an infinitely small um, particle is just a little tiny ripple in space time, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, going all the way up and so down. You know what I mean? How some systems fit? Like you could have the Ptolemy system with the epicycles, and if you do the math just right, it looks just like our system. So go ahead and believe it. You know, it's like that with their system at the bottom. But they're going for what you're going for. But it's weird they went in that direction because I do think that they they failed it as far as the direction of keeping it with kinetic. Well, it's the whole idea of items. you know, just because creating, the, you know, uh, the fourth level particles going C to the eight or speed or whatever is pretty. Well, and it's all that angular momentum thing that bugs me. You know, so the whole magnetism argument, you know, people think a whole bunch of stuff is swirling around the magnets. And you're saying, where did all this angular momentum come from to create all these rivers of flowing stuff? Where, where is all that energy? You yeah. can't see it anywhere. I can't. I can't throw a piece of dust in there and make the dust no, do it. No, that's a problem. I see that as a problem in physics, too. The same with gravity. It's like, how is it creating all this stuff when it's just sitting there and it's like creating energy from nowhere or something? And physics is just like, no, the thing was in the wrong place and it had that potential to do it. 
Well, right. they, well, they took because everything would be all in one clump if it hadn't gotten blown away and it got all this uh, potential energy at the beginning of the universe, and that's how they explain it, which is really a non-explanation to the fact that yeah, but it could do that for infinity. For it has enough gravity to gravity everything in the universe forever. You know, what I mean, nothing. Else. The spring can't do that. Like the spring can't be compressed for infinity and uncompressed forever. You know what I mean? So it is weird. And it's still spooky action at a distance. And as it's far a Feynman kind of thing, too, that Feynman, I don't remember that he actually did this one, but it reminds me of Feynman to point out that we don't really know why the ball looks like it's going backwards or whatever. You know what I mean? It's like we don't really, yeah, why can't it do that forever? And that is the whole thing about, well, maybe it's a kink in space, and so things are just rolling downhill. And it's like, yeah, that kind of makes sense with a metaphor that's circular because the rolling downhill thing uses gravity, which we're trying to explain. But um, anyway, well, that was good. Two hours. You said an hour. I thought an hour. And we did an hour and a half and then the extra. But, um, well, see, I think it was useful. And we could, I don't know if we could do another one. I don't know where we'd go because, but on the other hand, we're actually good. We're not that far. I went further than we got together in the sense that talking about um, acceleration. Now, the thing is, Gary, the way that, math and physics together deal with the fact that you've got changing velocities is with differentials and integrals, you know, with uh, calculus. Oh, I know, but it, the calculus is just the averaging. So that's about stuff that has an erratic stuff, stuff that has like those that. straight stuff that has the straight lines. The calculus is nothing because there's no pattern. Here's the thing, right. That's why I was saying with this guy where you have a half triangle. Yeah. The calculus would be the integral under here, but you don't yeah, have to worry. Yeah, because exactly. It's a half. But what if it's like this is the thing? If the force, like on a train, the force that isn't constant, you know, it's going to be jerky, like you're saying a car is. And so if the force, um, you know, starts off, oh, zero, then 60, and then, oh, now it's like I know, down. but 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 let's say there was that, but it was only, well, but it was only. Calculus, it's still this area, but how do you calculate that area? And then calculate is you split the area up into these little tiny I know, but you could yeah. always just average it by eye. You could just make your own average. Well, no, you could, yeah, no, you can kind of average it, but the problem is once you get into things like force and acceleration, um, you know, the average is hard because you do have instantaneous velocities and things, and there's, you know, because it's force. I'm it's just the, not. I'm not saying there's no reason to use math. I'm just saying to understand the principles and the concepts, you don't obviously have to be that exact. Well, but, I mean, all I'm you have to be is in the, the ballpark. Thing. I'm saying when you have a curve like this, it's hard to figure out what the value is underneath it. Like you got to do some figuring, and you can estimate. And here's the thing: it's this area. And when they teach calculus, you literally, if you had a graph like this, you can just measure the area. Right? Like literally take a ruler and break it into triangles and things that you can measure, you know, and estimate it. And calculus is actually just a way of doing that. Like calculus is like, well, take the average at this point and then take the average. At this I, point. I know, but even even simpler would be to take that line and draw it on a piece of plexiglass and then make a container and then, you know, that's one inch thick and then pour fluid in it and you'll get the exact answer. Well, no, that's a way <laughs> and it actually relates to the physical nature of ca why calculus was invented for, for physics because when you have these columns, if you just start making the columns smaller and smaller, you know, you can you can do this mathematical thing with limits where you can find out what it's converging on and it's something like this is is you'll never get it exact because look it's so weird but like things like sine waves or near sine waves if it's a mathematical thing you can easily use the integrals but a computer these days will actually measure something like this right like let's say you have an accelerometer that can measure that force through measuring the acceleration and then the computer will actually just go add it up like a human would with a ruler, right? And get all the pixels, and it won't be exact, but it'll be down to whatever the resolution of that data. Well, obviously, and yes, you've yeah, got yes, your and, 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 your force or whatever. Right. Instead of doing a hundred averages, it can do a million averages. Um, well, like in f times d, if the f is constant, it's the square of f times d. But in the real world, where the f goes up and down, the f times d is this thing. 
which is some fraction. Right. Well, I, I'm just saying something. that I think we both agree that all you're uh, seeking is a more accurate generality, but you can never do the exact explicit real answer because the real answer is atomically tiny. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, for sure. You go down to some resolution. Right. So you're just looking for as good an answer as you can get. But, I mean, I'm just saying in most cases all that's irrelevant. The horse my it's, wife drew when I tried yeah, to get her used to the tablet. It's very nice. Uh, yeah, I, you know, um, this guy got a, I got a spiritual feeling. Um, <laughs> here was my original drawing when I was thinking about having this talk with you from about a month ago. Well, that's much better. You didn't yeah. use it. Yeah, you did. I know. This is what you're asking for. So our next one, you know what? Uh, I did more of the math, and uh, maybe the next one, and you could lead with it. We could both draw of uh, more like actual, you know, uh, pool balls and kinetic things like that with the angles because that's the thing that makes energy and momentum work together is the fact that momentum has uh, they a direction can't, like uh, a again shift. again our fundamental I know you're gonna the fundamental the fundamental argument about. is is that you're not conceding that these are two conflicting descriptions of energy you're pretending <laughs> that momentum doesn't mean anything it's not an energy formula when i'm saying of course it's an energy formula you see me again? Uh, I see me twice. Interesting. Yes, it's very I'm nice. I'm not sharing. And it still <laughs> yeah. says my video is going. Now I stop. Uh, yeah, well. I'm going. So, yeah. Like grid view, no. Yeah, you know, next time we'll have to try to get I don't this. like these ones that don't show yourself because you should show. And also when you share screen, it's stupid. Yeah, no, it'd be better if you were in the picture But you somewhere. don't see me right now in the dim light because my light's off. But I've got my camera. You don't see me? I don't. You know, I just see your icon. Huh. Because of the share screen confused it. But anyway, I'm glad we can share screen. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm glad you're not uh, dead and all that. Everybody was saying you were, but um, yeah. well. so that's good always. <laughs> yeah, I got to keep, I mean, gotta keep disappointing them. You know, it's, to, you know, it's how the way to fight back is to disappoint the wishers. Um, but anyway, yeah. All right. Well, thanks. And uh, yeah, it worked out okay. And you're gone. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, so that's it. So till the next time. So that's enough of a video, right? So again, you just, this is the, the, <laughs> it's just coming back again. Let's see if his video works. All right. That was, that was accidental. So. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. I, anyway, just, bye. I was just pointing out how, boy, he's a rude fuck, isn't he? Um, but anyway, all right. Bye to myself again. All right. So till the next time and such. Man. Uh, don't you know whatever did you do this live or how do you do this you record this and obs and then put it up or yeah I, yeah i just made a, re a screen sh yeah i recorded it and i'll just post it as a video so right. um, see you later okay till next time and such all right bye, bye. all right yeah. now we got that over with so again the, the real argument the real argument is clearly about the fact that the, the this whole change in from momentum momentum was understood to be energy it was the quality of motion that's what they called it it was something the thing had it was its power its ability to move other stuff the ability to change other stuff it was a real thing describing something that would really be called energy and then you know this is the 1600s and <laughs> you know and then they threw in this competing formula in the 1700s, started to challenge these Newtonian ideas because they didn't like that Newton was right about everything. And that's pretty much all it was about. It was kind of just a petty conflict, a, a petty new modern physics that they just wanted to try to replace the old stuff with. There really wasn't any experiments to defend it. The only ones that did defend it were ones that are a misunderstanding of the experiment in the sense that clay is a really bad spring. It's a bad way to collect energy because fast things go further in it than slow things. So like gravity, it can fool you. If you're using gravity to tell you how much energy it is, yeah, it'll look like the small, the light thing goes further, so therefore it has more energy. But it really doesn't have more energy. When it hits your hand, it's going to hit with the same amount of force as the heavy thing that went much less. So anyway, those are the basic arguments. But they're both description of energy, and they can't coexist. It's just silly to say they're both right. They give completely different answers for what the amount of capacity to cause motion is. Something's capacity to cause motion in atoms 
in electrons and protons is what you're measuring. That's what a joule is. A joule is an amount of disruption you can cause um, material things. And you can't have two definitions of the answer that are different. <laughs> you can't. There's, there's no, you can't make that reasonable. Can't do it. All right. So anyway. All right. So that's enough. Yeah. So, yeah, my draft physics thing, I think it's busted. I got to fix this. This probably won't work. Be very careful. Yeah. Yeah. I got to fix my usual intro thingy. Anyway, till the next time and such that. We'll just leave it at that. So, uh, bye. <laughs> so long. Oh, God. So much work.